the, the field, the Laza field, is 60 kilometers away from Suriname and uh, hundreds of kilometers away from, from Venezuela. So uh, we are in no way draining uh, those other countries' resources. The, the, the largest Chinese company in the world operating on, in oil is partner to Exxon. It's not only Exxon. We spent about $800 million total on the project. That's from inception. That's from the start of the Stavros Law. Uh, and about $150 million U.S. of that has gone uh, to Guyanese, uh, Guyanese really? companies. Minister Trotman was forced to reveal that Ghana did receive the U.S. $20 million sign-in bonus from U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil. In the event that the, the matter goes to the ICG, the legal fees will be paid by the government of Guyana. The government of Guyana is responsible for that. It's a national sovereignty matter and it's something that we will have to pay for. We took a decision in 2015 to update the agreement with Exxon. As I said, it was not a renegotiation, it was an update of an agreement. We recognize, one, the sanctity of the agreement. We recognize, two, that the agreement was based on strategic um, reasons, and, and those strategic reasons and concerns did not diminish after the discovery in 2015. They did not disappear. In fact, I would say they deepened because Venezuela strengthened its claim against Guyana. According to Trotman, the threat from neighboring Venezuela to Guyana's oil-rich waters has not diminished, and Exxon has stood up and remained while other companies shied away from going too close to Venezuela. independence when there were a whole set of companies sitting offshore, sitting on shore. All of them left. And why did they leave? Because of the threat of our neighbor. The neighbor doesn't like us to say this, but it is a fact.
Last October, the Canadian mining firm Guyana Strategic Metals GSM Incorporated discovered lithium in Guyana. This pit behind me here is where AGM Guyana Goldfields intends to start its underground mining operations. Approximately 2.2 million ounces of gold is expected to be produced over a 15-year period. We'll put one of those in Rory's Knoll on the, on the wall across the pit from us. AGM Guyana Goldfields Inc. is a Canadian-based gold producer and the Aurora Gold Mines is its flagship project which achieved commercial production in January 2016.
last year when I spoke to the army, I said, we are going to use the army side by side with the Royal Engineers and the United States Army Corps of Engineers and the Brazilian Army Corps of Engineers to build roads and have bridges with the Defense Force. Equipment worth more than a billion dollars donated by the People's Republic of China will aid the Army in this process of developing infrastructure in the outlying regions. Guyana and Brazil, partners in regional development. The idea is to pave the roads in order to help the, the trade and the commerce between the two countries. It is very important for, for the Brazilian farmers in Roraima too, to use the road, to use the port for, to export. Yeah, well, Brazil traditionally has been, I would say, a guarantor of Guyana's territorial integrity. And Brazil has stated over and over again it has no interest in redrawing uh, borders. Brazil has stated over and over again its principle that borders which have been established under international law should not be disturbed.
A message from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in association with the Ministry of Education. The sovereign state of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana is our territory. Our boundary with Venezuela was established by international law since 1899. However, Venezuela has continued to violate the international law and treaties with controversial aggressive actions and unwarranted claims on 5 8 of Guyana's territory. The Geneva Agreement allowed for Venezuela to prove its contention that the arbitral award of 1899 was null and void. To this day, Venezuela has never done so. The land boundary between Guyana and Venezuela was settled 118 years ago. The arbitral award that determined the boundary continues to be accepted under international law and the boundary line it established is depicted on internationally recognized maps, including the map World Today produced by the United Nations. It is the government of Guyana's fundamental right to protect and guard our nation and sovereign boundaries. This, this land, land is my own. Guyana, arise, win glory. Hi there, Guyana. Let me enlighten you on the historical facts about the Guyana-Venezuela border issue. When Venezuela said, Hey, Britain, hola. So what going on when our boundary with you? And Great Britain was like, We're sending intrepid explorer Robert Schomburg, German chap, from the Royal Geographical Society to draw the western boundary between our two territories. So in 1840, Schomburg was dispatched to the far edges of the colony and on his return in 1844, produced a map with the western boundaries marked out. And Venezuela was like, Wait, que? No, 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 no me gusta eso. We don't like this. On the 3rd of October, 1899, the arbitral tribunal set up in 1898 gave its final decision on the issue. Drum roll, please. And the arbitral award of 1899 goes to Great Britain and Venezuela, everyone. Come on down. <laughs> Venezuela was so satisfied with that result that both parties came together to create the Venezuela and British Mixed Boundary Commission. Yes, the boundary line is good. We have a full, perfect, and final settlement, right? Yeah! Ah, wrong. Because after 63 years of Venezuela demonstrating compliance and acceptance of the arbitral award of 1899, in 1962, Venezuela decided, No, 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 no. We don't like this. The arbitral award of 1899, 1899 is still null and void to us. Now stay with me as this is important. In January 1944, Mr. Malay Prevost was awarded the Order of the Liberator, the highest award that can be given to a civilian by the Venezuelan government. One month later, on February 8, 1944, after all the participants of the arbitral tribunal had passed away, Mr. Malay Prevost dictated a memo which he instructed not to be published until after his death. It doesn't help that over the years, Venezuela has continued to violate Guyana's territorial integrity and undertake economic acts of aggression. That includes the Venezuelan occupation of the Guyanese half of Ancoco Island in 1966, the Leone Decree of 1968 attempting to lay claim to Guyana's waters, systematic escalation of aggression in 2013 with the apprehension of a vessel conducting seismic studies in Guyana's exclusive maritime economic zone by the Venezuelan Navy, protests and threats against companies involved in economic partnerships with the government of Guyana, and in 2015, the mobilization of military troops along the border with Guyana together with two Venezuelan presidential decrees, which also lays claim to most of Guyana's maritime territory. These decrees came at a time when oil was discovered in commercial quantities off the coast of Essequibo. How convenient! On the 29th of March 2018, the Foreign Affairs Minister filed Guyana's application against Venezuela with the International Court of Justice, the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. 
God bless Guyana. One people, one nation, one destiny. Guyana, arise, win glory. This week on Art Defense, we take a look at Venezuela's renewed claim to three quarters of Guyana's territory, which it has designated as Zona de Reclamacion, or Reclamation Zone. Before we dive into a panel discussion on the topic, take a look at this montage of clips found on YouTube to get a better idea of what the international community are saying and to demonstrate the rise of fringe groups in Venezuela with thousands of followers seeking to make the reclamation of Essequibo a reality. We begin by taking a look at a more recent incursion into Guyanese territory by a group calling themselves Mi Mapa de Venezuela Incluye Nuestro Essequibo or My Map of Venezuela includes our Essequibo. This group is one of the more hardline outfits that have sprung up in recent years around the idea of Venezuela was cheated out of Essequibo in an 1899 tribunal to settle the matter. The group have been active in disseminating information to and encouraging youth to engage with the issue and have sought to network with both political and military figures in the hope of forwarding their objectives. Welcome to this week's Off Defense. I'd like to show you a little clip of a Skype video that I recorded with a member of the Mimapo de Venezuela Incluyo Nuestro Esequibo group, which translates to mean uh, Mimapo Venezuela includes our Esequibos. 